Now, galaxies that are far, far away have gotten a little bit closer. Yeah, there are dazzling images from the James Webb Space Telescope that were recently unveiled, and they show the farthest that we Earthlings have ever seen in time and distance into space. But it's a little bit over my head, so I'm going to let astrophysicist Tyrone Woods do the explaining for us. Tyrone has come over from Victoria to join us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Okay, let's talk about what a big deal this telescope is and these images. A huge deal, literally. This is the biggest telescope we've ever been able to put in space for these kind of wavelengths. Six and a half meter diameter mirror. That's huge. Uh, and, and, and to shield it from the sun, uh, a sun shield the size of a tennis court. All of this had to unfold and inflate. It's just amazing. It is amazing. Okay, so I love stargazing, you know, lying back looking at the night sky. This takes us somewhere else. So I would love for you to take us into some of these images. What, what do you see when you look at this? Absolutely. So this is, this is you know, for reference, this is the, the flagship image that was announced with the big Biden release last week. So what we're looking at here is a deep view into the early universe, uh, bill millions, billions of light years away. What we see here, there's a couple of overexposed stars, but otherwise we're looking at um, a galaxy, the light from which started coming towards us, and actually a cluster of galaxies, four and a half billion years ago when the solar system was just starting to form. And then what's amazing, it's so massive, this cluster of galaxies, it's actually warping space-time around it. We're seeing Einstein's relativity in action. And so we see from behind this cluster, galaxies that are getting warped like silly putty, but also magnified, allowing us to look all the way back to even some of these dots, 13 billion years ago, the light started That's coming. That's crazy. Towards. Warped like silly putty. Okay, you've given me a whole new perspective right. on this, but uh, I'd love for you to take us through some more images. Yeah, let's look at some more of them. So this is the Carina Nebula. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It looks like, a, it, looks like it was painted, but this is a this real picture. This looks like picture. a giant wave, first yeah, of all. Okay, bit. this is in space. Take us through it. So what we're looking at, this is a little, little bit closer to home. This is in our Milky Way. This is the Carina Nebula, actually just a piece of it. And what we're seeing here is dense clumps of gas and dust uh, in which stars are forming. Uh, and around those stars, disks of gas and dust condensing to form planets, new solar systems like our own. Uh, what we see carved out here, some of these that, uh, stars that formed a little while ago, the hot ionizing radiation, high energy radiation is carving out these sort of waves that you see. I love it. So we got a little bit of a glimpse of this with the Hubble yeah. telescope. So what's different about the James Webb? Oh, it's amazing. So first of all, all of these stars that you see, these would have, most of these, except for the very brightest ones, would have been totally obscured by the dust and the gas. Because James Webb can see in the infrared, redder than red light, it allows us to peer through this dust and look at these stars we never would have been able to see before and the planets forming around them. It is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Why don't you continue? Let's go to the next one. So this is the Southern Ring Nebula. We looked at stars being born, a nursery. This is the death of a star. What we're seeing here is actually the final, you know, a uh, uh, puffing out of gas, the outer layers of a star, much like our own sun, but many, many billion years from the now. The final gasp of a star? That's is that right. what you're saying? That's wow. right. And actually, this star, this is two different images from James Webb using two different instruments. The bright star that we see here is not actually the dying star. It's this dim red one that Webb is able to see through the dense dust around it. The other one is actually orbiting it. It's in a solar system with two suns like Tatooine and Star Wars. <laughs> it is absolutely gorgeous. So we talk about this being an international kind That's of right. a, a project. So where does Canada, and more specifically, your institute fit into it? Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously we've been doing a lot of work developing the science case for all of these things and getting ready to, to dig into things like Stefan's Quartet okay, here. Okay, why don't we so start is, with Stefan's Quartet? What's oh, going sure, on here? Oh, sure, sure. So this is, uh, if you, uh, this is actually um, about t uh, 290 million light years away. This is a, a group of galaxies, four of which are all in a cosmic collision course. Two of them you can see actually colliding into each other. And inside the heart of this one, there's a supermassive black hole that mass is pouring into. Do you just find yourself staring at these images oh, sometimes? It just takes absolutely. you somewhere else, literally, doesn't it? Absolutely, literally somewhere else. And something that's you know worth pointing out, if you look in the background, all of these points 
except for a couple stars here. All of these points are other galaxies. There's so much going on in every single picture. Okay, and we've also got a, a little bit of a glimpse into the, the data that, that's being collected. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us more about that. Yeah, so this is this is actually from a Canadian instrument, NERIS instrument, that was developed by, you know, as a partnership between the Hertzberg Institute, where I'm based, and also the Canadian Space Agency and university and commercial partners across Canada. So what we're looking at here is actually the spectrum of light. So if you shine light through a prism, you break it down into its constituent components. And you can, you know, with an instrument like NERIS, look very precisely at this spectrum, the spectrum of light of a planet around another star. Yeah, that's right. It's actually, it's half the mass of Jupiter, but it's orbiting closer than Mercury orbits to our sun, whipping around, so it's really, really hot. But what we've been able to find, and this is an amazing proof of concept, is water vapor in its atmosphere. Now, this wouldn't be a great place to live, but it proves we can find water in the atmospheres of other planets around other stars. Now, you mentioned the Hertzberg Institute That's and right. in collecting this, this kind of data. How, how significant is this for Canada? This is huge. So, I mean, first of all, Canada is playing a direct role in unveiling everything from uh, the origin of the elements that make up things like rocky planets and life uh, to searching for actual signatures of life or at least the conditions suitable for life around other worlds to peering back into the first first few hundred million years of the universe when the first stars and galaxies were being born, something we call cosmic dawn. And of course, along the way, we're also developing a lot of amazing technology that has applications right here at home. Okay, so what happens from here with all of these amazing images? So when we originally were planning James Webb, the idea was let's make sure it can live at least five years, 10 years. It's going to live, we hope now, maybe 20 years, maybe more. This is all just the beginning. It's outdoing what, what took Hubble 30 years in days, in months. Imagine what it's gonna do in 20 years. It's just amazing. Tyrone, thank you so much for, I guess, deciphering some of these <laughs> images for us. It's been very, very helpful and really nice to meet you. And thanks so much for having me.